Let's now start constructing our model for the bank system as we uh, uh, described in the earlier video about its requirements. And uh, in order to really build a model, we have to add different components into the model. And there are two kinds of components you can add from Rodan. One is called context, the other one is called machine. We're gonna see one, uh, one by one. And typically you want to put a context first before you actually put a machine that will actually see uh, the context. We're gonna do one by one. And then I'm gonna summarize what they are at the end. There are two ways for you to add a, uh, components uh, into the model. You can either right click on the projects over here and then you can say new and then event B components. If you click on that, you will see uh, under uh, the, the, uh, the current projects and then the name of the components. And now you can see, as I said, you got two categories of component you can add. Either it should be a machine or it should be a context. But in this case, you were gonna choose a context and then you can say finish if you want to. But I'm gonna show you another way to create a, a, like a, a components. Right, let me say cancel here. That's definitely a valid approach. Another way to do it, you can see there is a bar over here with the different wizards over there. That's uh, maybe like a shortcut if you actually prefer uh, not having so many uh, mouse clicks. You can see that we got different parts over here. The first one here is about creating a new project, which we don't need to. We already got an empty project from the earlier video. And this one here, open the wizard to create a new components. So this will be equivalent to what we just did, right? This will be a second approach. If you click on that, again, you got the same pop-up um, manual over here. All right, let's now give the name uh, to the context, right? So context. Uh, we're gonna start with the very initial context that's gonna be very easy, uh, very uh, simple. Let me call that C0. The naming convention will be, uh, context will be C, and then we kind of like uh, counting indices of the array. So we say from zero over here, all right? Saying C1 is okay, but I'm just, uh, that's a convention, C0, all right? And then you're gonna say finish over here. All right, as soon as we are done, you can see actually we got under the bank projects, we actually got C0 and that's the context. If you expand over here the context, you will see several stuff over here, right? You can see we got carrier sets, we got constraints, we got axioms, and also we got proof obligation. So these are all the things that you have to deal with whenever you create either a context or a machine. Let me just give you some informal description for each one of them very quickly. So carrier sets are simply the set of entities that you assume they actually exist, but you don't really have to numerate the exact contents for the set. You can simply use them uh, and then manipulate it at the abstract level, just the set. I would definitely see, for example, accounts. And constraints will be, uh, when you can actually declare a certain uh, constants for your context that, that can be used later by the machine. And you, you have to maybe add some extra constraint to the uh, constant. And the constraint themselves can either be declared as an axiom, in which case we assume the constraint to be true uh, automatically without proving it. Or you may declare the constraint to be a theorem, which means we have to use other axioms in the same context to prove that particular uh, constraint, right? like a theorem. And uh, uh, similar, you know, for axiom, that's uh, basically axiom will be something you assume to be true. And proof of obli uh, proof obligation. If there's any theorem that can uh, that actually uh, are actually specified in your context, they will be uh, proved under this. And at the moment, we don't have any, so that's why it's empty. All right. And, okay, we got a context over here, and we're gonna add a constant and also its constraint. We're gonna do it in, do that in a moment, but I think we may, uh, for those of you who might be interested in adjusting the font size for your uh, model, let's do it right away. It might be a common uh, desire for all of us. So just go to window and go to preferences over here, and then you can simply type, very similar to how you did it uh, in Eclipse usually, right? So you can just type font and go to colors and fonts over here, and go under Rodent. And then you can see there is one over here, event B keyboard text font, etc. right? Again, and then you can say edit over here. And you can definitely choose the font you like. One possible font size would be my, one of my personal favorite, Verdana. Okay, you can go for Verdana, uh, Verdana regular, uh, for example, and then you can now adjust the font size. Let's say for visibility, let's say 16. How about that? Select and then apply and close. All right, that's uh, much bigger. Well, for sure, you can make it even bigger if you wish, but I think for visibility for the recording, hopefully this is acceptable to you. 
All right, so that's about how to adjust the font size and then about a very quick walkthrough about the components for each uh, uh, context. And we get different subcomponents for machine as well. That's something we'll see a little bit uh, later. All right, so what we want to do now is to address this particular item in the requirements. So this particular one, all right? So remember, we talk about a credit limits, right? The credit limits over here could be maybe a 100, right? But the credit credit limit should not be uh, like a non neg uh, sh should be non negative, right? It must be always positive, basically. The credit limit should not be uh well, you know, it's uh, up to us. We can definitely make it maybe always positive, or we can just make it uh, larger than or to zero. It's up to our interpretation for the requirements. But anyway, so that's something we're gonna do over here. Yeah, I'm gonna make a little notes over here uh purple right a credit limits over here so this is something we're going to address in c0 right that's something uh, so always remember when you go back uh, to look up your notes remember everything i put on purple is going to be something for you to trace from the informal requirements back to the formal model that we have all right all right let's now do a credit limit c you can simply go under the context over here and then right click and then you can see uh, over here, the child over here, you can add different things, right? Uh, you can either extend, which we wouldn't talk about in this tutorial. Usually do that when you want to add a refinements. We'll talk about refinements in the later lab. And you can add a constant, you can add, uh, add an axiom, or you can add a carrier set. Remember I talk about the distinction between axiom and theorem. So in Rodent, you, uh, it, if you want to add an axiom or a theorem, you want to say an axiom uh, to begin with, and then you can choose whether the axiom should actually be a theorem or not a theorem. It sounds a little bit weird, but that's the way to deal with. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Let's now do a constant first. So I can say a constant over here, and then, so they give you some uh, default name, but we can definitely change the name, right? Just go to the editor for that particular uh, constant, and let's now do, let's say, um c okay so this will be the credit limits so this is the name of the constant and you can see there's a green arrow over here to the to its right you can write some text as a comments and you don't really need to say this like a double forward slash like in java you don't have to you can just put in the comments directly so this one we can say credit limits credits and limits and this actually comes from environments constraint number three right over here environments constraint number three so we can do the double tri uh bi-directional uh referencing so it will be environments constraint number three right over here right and you can see there's a star besides c0 right pretty much like an eclipse so whenever you make a change on the model i would say do incremental save whenever you can so you're going to say control and s and you can see some red underline over here under the constant over here, right? Similar to Eclipse. Well, when you are writing your Java programs, whenever you got some red underline, that means you got some compilation problem. But our model can also suffer from compilation problem if you didn't give the proper types to the variables or constant. That's exactly what's happening now. If you move your mouse over the cross over here, either way, uh, I'll actually move uh, just right around the uh, underline over there move the focus, it says constant C does not have a type, right? That's one. Well, you cannot just declare the constant without a type. Similar to Java, whenever you declare some variable or constant, you got to give a type, like an integer or string or some objects, right? That's one way to look at what the errors are. Or you can go under the rodent problems over here. You can see under that, we also got error, right? So whenever you do live exercises or whenever you do uh, the programming test, you have to make sure there's no error over here there should be empty list of errors when you, whenever you submit right so it doesn't it does not have a type we have to introduce a type how do we introduce a type for constant you can think about this is only to declare the name of the constant and later on we do the same procedure for variable and in order to really uh give a type we have to add a constraint right that's what we should do so let's go back to the context again uh, move your cursor around the context over here and then right click Again, we got the four choices that we saw before. And now in this case, rather than constant, we're going to add an axiom. And axiom is the way for you to specify either something that, that, that is assumed to be true or something that has to be proved as true. But well, we'll see. Add an axiom. And then axiom over here. Well, this, this is so-called a label. The label 
then it's completely up to you. You can definitely give a label, but I think the rodent, uh, the rodent convention is simply if there's an axiom, something that you don't want to prove is a x m, and then you're gonna uh, index it with the one, right? To start with one. And notice that here, not theory, and that's something I will show to you. That's uh, something very interesting. Okay, you have to choose the right option. And by default, by the way, this symbol over here is a mathematical symbol for boolean true, right? Uh, let me just mention that very quick, quickly since I see that. You can see under the symbols over here, right? So you can see this, uh, like a T over here, is a true predicate. And in the, what's the ASCII character? Simply T-R-U-E to spell it out, right? If you simply type out T R, let me show to you, right? You can see in the rodent over here, if you type in the char uh, ASCII character for true, T-R-U-E, and then put a space, it suddenly becomes the mathematical symbol for like a T, right? That means uh, uh, what? Well, just Boolean T, uh, Boolean true. On the other hand, what about false? And if you uh, go back to the symbol over here again, oh, let me just uh, put, make sure. Yeah, the symbols will only show when it's applicable. So you want to make sure your cursor is actually uh, inside the editor, uh, inside the editing area. And you can see if you move your mouse over the, the upside down T, so that'll be the false predicates. And what will be the ASCII character? It will be false. Right? So now if I go to here and then I type false and then it automatically automatically becomes uh, like a upside down T for the mathematical symbol, right? So I also included some resources in your lab manual about the uh, like a summary about the between mathematical notation and its ASCII characters. So that's something also you're supposed to know. All right, you will de definitely need to learn them. All right, but that's not what we want. So what we want to say is uh, C is actually, uh, let's say it's a natural number. That's uh, It's a special set of natural number that will always be larger than zero. Let's say there's a credit limit. Let's say credit limits cannot even be zero. So what we do is we're going to say C is a member of certain set, right? How do we uh, type a member of? So you can see this uh, symbol over here. You can either click on this symbol over here, right? You can see, oh, we, uh, let me just do it again, right? Don't lose the focus, all right? Go back to the focus for the editing area and then move your mouse over this membership symbol, elements off. And the ASCII there is actually just a single colon, right? You can either simply click on that and then this uh, membership symbol is there. Or you can actually simply type colon and then you will just become a membership operator anyway. So I would say in the beginning, you will be okay if uh, whenever you want to uh, have a mathematical symbol, simply go to this table over here and then click on the icon that you want. That's one way. However, once you get more into the modeling concept, you might just be able to type type out the ASCII character automatically. That's how I would do it when I constructed my model. All right, C should be a member of the appropriate set. And this is the set that's similar to what we discussed in the lecture, not exactly the same. We want to, so you can see here, we got either the natural number over here, right? That would be just NAT. And also we got another one called N1, NAT1. Natural number is what we discussed in the lecture. That will be the sequence of numbers starting from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four. So those are the non-negative, right? On the other hand, this will be all the positive numbers, right? And one, you can see the one over there, that means you're gonna start with one. So there'll be nat one. So let's say choose this set, NAT one. And then, right, that's it, and enter. And then you can see now the model is unsaved. So you want to make sure control S to save it, right? That'll be the kind of workflow you have to get used to. All right. We still actually got uh, some error over here. Let's see. Let's, let's move the mouse over uh, the cursor over. Let's see if there's any other error. Okay. We don't see any problem over here, but somehow it's showing some red underline. Maybe it's not re really uh, refreshing well. When we, let's say we close this and let's now double click on C0 again. All right. It's fine now. Okay, sometimes maybe the the, uh, the GUI is behind uh, the actual model. So you just maybe just close it and then uh, it should be uh, okay. But you can see the problem over here is kind of up to date. So it's an empty list of errors. So what we have achieved so far, we actually got a context zero with C, constant C of type natural number one, positive number. And this corresponds to environmental three that we talk about in the requirements, right? Over here. It's simple, but I really want to make sure you understand every detail so that you will be able to complete the exercises, which I'll assign to you at the end of the tutorial. And some extra ones on the lab manual.